So we're finally doing the portfolio review. We've got, I've got a few portfolios here for you to review, Dad. My poor dog, Marco, has been banished outside and he's sort of staring at us through the uh, window, <laughs> plaintively. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed our film on Al Ben Susan. Just a couple of things. I, we purposely didn't have my voice in it. We wanted to give the centre stage to the wonderful Al. And uh, I think it was a better film for that. And it was really kind of a celebration of, of his attitude and his life and his art and so on. There were a couple of things that I wanted to put in, but I couldn't. Uh, during my stay, he would leave things for me. Uh, you know, for when I get back, I was going out and seeing magazines and trying to find a publisher for my book, Survivor. And he would, I'd come back and there'd be little, little things. And, uh, and it's just a, a measure of the man. Um, there's a picture here, which we can do a proper scan of, uh, that he took. He had a Panasonic D-Snap and he's written, um, Harry, yesterday I saw this guy all sprawled out and looking like a crucified Jesus. Check out his face. And to think that once he was somebody's little baby boy. <laughs> and I just found that incredibly sort of poignant. Uh, and I kept them, you know, 10 years later, or maybe this was from my first trip. 14 years later, I kept them. And then there's a, a couple there sort of on the tube. And he's written, not without hope, which is sort of sad. And uh, when I arrived, um, he wasn't at actually uh, at the at the flat and I remember feeling really nervous because Washington Heights wasn't a particularly good area there are parts of New York that are very kind of tourist friendly and accommodating but on the corner of the street there were kind of what appeared to be sort of hookers and kind of people that were kind of nece not necessarily going to be well disposed towards this English guy who with a hired car you know but I got parked and I found the key and I let myself in and I found uh, this note from Al, and it says, Harry, the joint is yours. Food in the fridge is eatable. You are free to use the place. And if you rent it out, I get half. See you Monday around eight. Hope you have a successful weekend. And then he's drawn a little picture of, of him. Yeah. Anyway. That will be you, on screen. Yeah, I, I, hope, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the film. And, uh, it was fantastic making, it wasn't yeah, I think it? it was really enjoyable. Yeah, I think you did a really good job yeah, with the editing. And, and well shot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, it was, it was 10 years ago, so yeah. it's nice to see this stuff being used. Yeah, and uh, we, we have a few more films we'd like to make. Um, we enjoyed making them. Mm. Creatively, they're uh, quite fun to make. Very mm. fulfilling, so we have a couple more. We have more footage of yeah. some other stuff coming up in the future. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go straight into the uh, portfolio review. Right. So you've done many before. You've, I remember you, you worked for a, a uni or something or someone. Yeah, I mean, I, firstly, I, I'd say that um, I think I, I do actually I'm going to get on my soapbox a bit and say that I find it irritating that uh, all these sort of so-called so gatekeepers sort of announce that they're sort of giving portfolio reviews and then people have to pay to sort of uh, access you know their opinion and uh you know so i when i've whenever i've done portfolio reviews i've either done them you know for a university sort of thing i'll come in for the day you know you might get a fee for the day and then you give a talk and stuff like that but you know i do think this sort of kind of emphasis on people that already have a living being a picture editor or or a, or a curator you know their job is to look at new work uh, and that you know they're paid for that for doing that and so doing this sort of side hustle doing portfolio reviews i find is slightly problematic so anyway now that we've got that out of the way <laughs> okay yes yeah, so we've got quite a few okay um, i'm going to take my glasses off i think okay we've got quite a few in the um actually i might just get my other glasses because i can look so i can yeah, look no keep, scrutinize these pictures properly <laughs> okay go grab them <laughs> so yeah we, we've had quite a few been sent in which i appreciate uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, but yeah, I've just picked out kind of the first five. Okay, this is Simon. Simon Fazio. Fazio. Yeah, firstly, he's taken a picture of himself uh, on his website and he looks warm and approachable and he looks like a nice person. So <laughs> I think that's actually a really good. Uh, if you're dealing with people, 
and they've never worked with you before, if you look like you kind of like somebody who who easy I mean, to work with. Yeah, I mean, people will always buy some something from somebody they like, you know. So and that's a that's a good start. And also, yeah, I was going to say, I, I love Melbourne, so it must be a great place to work. Okay, cool. We've actually got two from Melbourne, so yeah, we'll continue on. Um, so I guess we go straight into the photography. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you're not really one to judge when it comes to websites. Uh, yeah, that's your <laughs> area of expertise. It's working on it, it's, it's lacking. So uh, he's got a music photo tab here, we'll, we'll go to here. Mm -hmm. So straight away I'll just start scrolling and then if there's anything that catches your eye... Well, I quite like the, the shot in the water there, um, that's pretty cool. I can't zoom, maybe I can, there you go. Yeah, that's nice. Anything particularly, I'm, I'm not too sure how these... I don't know whether it was an accident, uh, but he's the chap is wearing sort of uh, sort of either a kind of suit or more likely pajamas of a, of a particular hue that work really well, I think, you know, uh, the alternative, I think if he was wearing um, sort of swimming trunks, it wouldn't be such a strong picture. And, and it's sort of quite graphic and everything. It could be an alternative sort of fashion type picture. Um, I would say that um, on the bottom left hand corner, there's a there's a sort of rock um, that is sort of capturing a lot of light. So that would be a really easy retouch that I would yeah. remove. Yeah, uh, just because being totally pedantic, it, it kind of doesn't really add anything and it, and it maybe sort of takes your eye and you've probably noticed yeah, it yeah, now. Yeah, now you've said it, for sure. Um, but they, they all look nice. They all look uh, available light, which I like to see. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, available light, apart from the sort of the live uh, picture of somebody sort of DJing uh, that might probably, probably lit, uh, you know, in a sort of stage environment. But yeah, I, I really like them. I mean, they yeah. look quite authentic. Going back to this one, it kind of... I was going to say, actually, uh, postscript, the, there's a top left picture is clearly lit, you know, and they've used flash and they've brought the back, background down a little bit. But I think the pictures um, are uh, quite... It's quite... I think really when you're um, trying to tout for business, you can either be a jack of all trades or you can be someone who uh, specialises. And um, I think this sort of shows a degree of versatility but it also, uh, it, it's clear that you can you can get a sense of what you're going to get. And he's clearly put his subjects at ease and uh, not kind of, um, they don't look awkward. They look sort of authentically themselves. So no uh, alarm bells ringing, I think. And it, it can do live, you know, it's quite, quite, there's quite a lot of versatility there. So quite horrible, I guess. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon uh, Simon's probably getting some work. Clearly this is... Uh, uh, there's a there's a good selection of imagery there. Yeah, because you mentioned in our Q and A video, um, I think it was in that one, how it can be important to kind of develop your style. So, um, commissioners. Yeah, my uh, sort of mentor when I was growing up was a photographer called Lester Bookbinder. In fact, I it's sort of sad because of the digital world that we live in now, and he worked in an analog era. Nobody really knows who he is, but he made. Uh, covers for Vogue in the 1950s. Um, I mean, he's a bit of a legend. And uh, recently I bought a, an original signed Lester Bookbinder. He's no longer with us now. Um, on There's the picture. I bought that, I bought that picture uh, for £25 um, on, on, on eBay. Lovely. Yeah. So, and the guy, I asked the guy where he got it from and he said a charity shop in, in Hertfordshire. It's so, quite sad, actually. But. I know. Well, I recognise the picture because my dad had that picture because my dad was friends with Lester Bookbinder. But Lester Bookbinder said to me, I'd worked, uh, I was working in a studio in Exeter and he came and visited my parents and he said, you have to be in London. And he gave me some work and I kind of uh, evolved uh, from a kind of photographer who had a bit of everything in his portfolio to what he suggested, which is that you really want 20 pictures that are all really the same picture. Or you did back then because you basically, any photographer that's working at the, at the highest end, their pictures should have a unique visual fingerprint and be instantly recognizable because then the people commissioning you know what they're gonna get. So really your portfolio, um, you know, in, a, in, a, in, in an extreme sense, you know, like David Bailey with his stark pictures from the 60s or, Richard Avedon and Irving Penn 
their work is instantly recognizable and uh, that's really uh, one way of looking at it and that's what Lester told me to do and that's what I did I sort of created this portfolio and then went up to London you know at the end of the 80s and the picture editors at the New Musical Express where I started they knew what they were going to get because they were all shot in the same camera pretty much Rollerflex twin lens reflex uh, you know with the same lens same sort of technique, all black and white. So that's really quite important is consistency of vision. Nice. And just going back to this one, it actually reminds me of the picture you took of Gordon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, something, no. something to throw in. I mean, I recently, we were on holiday, weren't we? Yeah. And uh, my friend Gordon uh, was in the pool. And, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I always feel completely bereft if I don't have a camera with me and on this occasion I did it was in Spain and I just took this picture and I, I at the, at, as soon as I took it I knew that it was an interesting picture and that was it was more than a, a body in a pool and it and it kind of felt almost uh, like uh, Bacon-esque like Francis Bacon it had a kind of tension and uh, and a subtext it was it could have been like a fetus uh, sort of in a womb because he was in this we'll cut away to the picture yeah. Uh, or it could have been a, a corpse floating in the pool. But um, yes, I, when I'm a sucker for, I like photographing people in water, you know, uh, I've got lots of pictures like that. Uh, and the picture of Gordon is, is one of my recent favorites. Cool. In fact, it was recently uh, in, the, in an exhibition, uh, uh, which I was, uh, also my picture of Cedric as well, who's yeah. friends with Gordon, so. We can put them both mm. up. All right, cool. So uh, we haven't got much time, so okay. we'll just move on to the... Yeah, uh, nice nice work, Simon. Uh, anything, final notes? Um, no, I think keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I, I think probably what I would say to anyone is work out the pictures that you feel compelled to take, that you derive intrinsic pleasure from producing, and make those pictures. Don't think about what the picture editors want. And that way, you know, even if you're kind of sometimes, you know, uh, you get you get bad criticism or whatever, at least you're having a better life because you're producing something that's authentically you. So, um, I mean, I, I, I like the picture of in, in the water. I mean, you do have great light in Australia, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> and, and you've utilized that well. So um, keep doing what you're doing. Mm, that's interesting. What you and said. I think also the portraits, you know, I'd say the live stuff, if you have a decent SLR, it's sort of a technical exercise because with autofocus and auto exposure, it's not really that difficult to do. Whereas your portraits, you obviously have a good rapport with people and you're capturing that rapport and not everyone can do that. And that's not something that AI can, can influence or, you know, your, your relationship that you're recording when you make a portrait is unique to that moment and that, and that connection that you have with, a, with your subject. And that's coming across here. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Simon. Uh, we're going to move on to our second uh, Melbourne photographer, uh, David Colopy. Uh, Colopy. Colopy. Uh, yeah. Also. Colopy. Colopy. <laughs> yeah. Also from Melbourne. So this is uh, the homepage. Cool. Straight to this image. I actually really love this image. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, anything you want to mention? Um, clearly available light um, there's a sort of uh, a picture that may not have worked as well when we were shooting on film but digital there's more information there and 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 so the particularly the person on the right you know that he's almost completely in shadow but there's enough information there to oh, make. so in film this would have been much more difficult to I would say so yeah I mean possible uh, but uh, I mean, I'm assuming it was shot on uh, I'm probably going to be t uh, uh, David will probably tell us that it was shot on, uh, on film, on film. But I don't think so uh, okay. but nice sort of black and white uh, picture I mean I personally think that black and white was a sort of a temporary uh, kind of limitation. technical limitation yeah. yeah and so I think in time we may look back at pictures uh, less favorably uh, at pictures that are conceived in black and white, especially if you're shooting on a digital uh, color, uh, you know, incredible gamut digital camera, and then you're choosing to throw away that information. Because I mean, we see in color, we're not, we're not dogs like Marco, we, we <laughs> see in color, and therefore, you know, photography should be representing the human experience. And, and black and white was a temporary sort of technical limitation. And so, it, it gets associated with documentary photography and truth and authenticity. And um, I would just ask the question, why? 
brilliant. Okay, so um, we've got some tabs along the side here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click into people since you're a portrait photographer. Yeah, Hopefully okay. we get some images of some people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one, it's this cool. This one here is quite interesting. It's almost, um, it looks quite commercial. Yeah, it's, it's sort of been, it's quite contrived, but it's very well lit, I would think. You know, it, it, it's tricky sort of lighting something like that, but it's sort of, uh, he, it's quite successfully executed. Um, I guess it's sort of a, a kind of an old, uh, a kind of from a uh, feminist perspective, perhaps it's sort of uh, looking at kind of uh, the power balances from the <laughs> sort of addressing the patriarchy or something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, different, a different, more commercial uh, sort of set of pictures, I would say. I think yeah, money to be made. This looks. I quite like that one. There's a nice picture there with a we'll bit go of. into here. Yeah, there's a nice because it's all the all the red light, the light that's reflected off the uh, off the um, gingham uh, tabletop. Um, what's the name? Uh, tablecloth yeah. <laughs> uh, is sort of reflecting nicely up, you know, and that's quite an unusual light. I, that's a sort of one of my one of my favourites. You could see that as an advert, you know. Um, yeah. You could lay some type across the bottom here, you know, where it's dark and so on. Oh, mm, that's quite graphic, isn't it? Yeah. So he, he this, this definitely looks uh, like you, you're making money for sure. Mm. I mean, these um, the, the 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 trouble with this sort of thing um, is that uh, it's it's quite graphic. I mean, it's great. Um, I mean, it's very uh, striking when you first see it, uh, but now we all have Photoshop, and so um, it's a nice execution, and, uh, you know, it has a sort of stark power to it. But these sorts of things are really kind of an exercise in sort of technique uh, and kind of harnessing digital um, image manipulation, and those are the sort of things that will be kind of, I think, superseded by AI. Interesting. Uh, so you really have to kind of bring something that's uniquely human and original. I'm not saying that's not original, but, you know, these are sorts of things that are kind of um, initially, like AI, actually, initially the quality is there and it's kind of, uh, you know, has a, has a sort of certain power to it. But... You have to sort of think about how things are going to look in 20 years' time when you look back at those images, and you, you might find some of these images will date more than others. I do think the picture of the bike in the restaurant uh, will, is, a, is a classic. It's timeless. Timeless picture, yeah. It's a strong picture. I mean, you could imagine that as part of a set with a National Geographic shot on Kodachrome, and it has a sort of richness, and, and the light's great. And so definitely... Um, awesome. th these ones are sort of a bit like my... Um, my uh, pictures that I did with uh, people, uh, Holocaust survivors, where I got them to write a sentence in their own handwriting. So I do think uh, that um, is something that I've I've messed with because I do think sort of the ha handwritten note can further sort of personalise and make make the pictures sort of mm -hmm. more intimate. Um, awesome. But, yeah, but the good. good. Uh, just have a look, quick look at his other tab. Mm. I know that, that lovely Melbourne light. Yeah, it's golden, isn't it? Yeah. So these are all... Is that a series, the Italy? Oh, uh, yeah. So there's more pictures from Italy. Mm. Street photography, in a mm. way. Excuse Marco if you can hear him. Can yeah, say. he's sort of whining and we'll jumping put, up at we'll the window. We'll put a clip in. We've got that's, I mean, that's obviously... Venice is so photogenic and beautiful, but that's nice sort of execution. Yeah, with the mist. Mm. You haven't done much. Um, I, you always take pictures of architecture, but never or landscape photography. But you don't. Uh... I do. I do take. I do take pictures, but I, yeah, I d tend to get commissioned to do portraits. But I mean, I have done. Uh, I enjoy doing uh, kind of reportage. I did something for the Guardian recently. I've been working on a project on St Ives, so um, I've taken a lot of pictures, sort of about the changing. The way that I, St Ives in Cornwall has been sort of gentrified and sort of evolved from kind of this authentic sort of 
fishing village and and, and then you know the, the artists coming there and now it's now it's really a kind of holiday resort like Disney mm. and it's not owned by anyone locally and these it's a sort of international uh, holiday industrial complex you know um, so yeah I mean I d there are not many there are portraits in that series but not many in fact you worked on them didn't you because oh, yeah, I needed yeah. to send them to the Guardian <laughs> So his music, you've obviously got mm. a lot of experience. Yeah, I mean, I think I think some re some really good stuff. What I would say, uh, I wouldn't really criticise it because I think you know when you're um, working, he's clearly working, and that's the main thing. If you're earning a living from photography, then that's an impressive yeah. thing in and of itself. Some of the pictures I like more than others. I think it's important to probably in uh, in the in the kind of milieu that he's operating in. He's got to kind of um, be versatile and be able to do the live pictures. And then, you know, um, it's probably a different scene than if you were a photographer in New York where you where they're really want, wanting specialists. So it's as I said before, you know, you can either go down the route where you're versatile and you you're you can turn your hand to a variety of different tasks. And that's good sort of if you're in a sort of more of a, a, a provincial uh, setting, you know, if you're kind of not working in New York or Los Angeles or whatever, you're kind of, um, you know, having to, you probably the fees are slightly less, but you, but it's important that you you pick up lots of different jobs. Whereas, you know, if you're in New York, then they, as I said, they'll be looking for people that solely do uh, a then, certain, not just portraits, but a certain type of portrait. But then you'd get one job a month or well you know you might be i guess the the world's picture editors would be looking at or or art directors would be looking at photographers based in new york it's oh, a yeah. kind of cult it's a sort of center for the production mm -hmm. of, of high class sort of imagery or you know cool i will right, we'll just go back to the home page so uh, some great stuff there yeah well done david yeah thank you david all right uh we'll move on to kenny uh we've we've had plenty of comments from Kenny. He's a great supporter. Yeah, he's got some tear sheets he's here. He's very well published, uh, which is good to see. Yeah. So we'll start with just his uh, portrait session, then we can move on to the tear sheets. Mm. So straight away, we'll just start scrolling. If anything mm. catches your eye, I quite like the, the simple graphic. Uh, you could see that as a Nike advert. Yeah, uh, for sure. Doesn't say uh, where that was taken. It might just be Kenny's son, but uh, yes. nice strong picture. I like this picture of the, with the horse as well. All right, we we'll keep scrolling. Yeah, it's obviously very much uh, a, a photographer of people. Mm -hmm. um, um, I read he was he was uh, big in the nineties around skateboarding scene and stuff like that, which I was oh, yeah. particularly that, interested I think, in. Did he comment on that? On, oh, I've seen it on his portfolio. Okay. I've taken a quick look at a few of these. Yeah, Fred was a skateboarder <laughs> of some repute. <laughs> <Was>. <laughs> well, it's probably I a bit dangerous. Do it every now and again. Yeah. Yeah. So the skater mag and everything, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then he's got Sum 41, Green Day, it's pretty cool. Mm. So uh, we'll go through, this is obviously you were around at this time, but this yeah. is, I'd say, a very different style to what you've done. Yeah. Uh, anything you quickly you want to, uh, I'll scroll oh, through that, first. Is uh, Billy Piper? No, I, th I don't think so. It's uh, Mimi mm. but from Kenny. Yeah, it makes a good sort of spread, doesn't it? For sure, uh, Yeah. for sure. And this, this is good, a nice usage of a, of a, a full page live shot and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. Really nice the way they've used the the edge of the curtain for to the, put the, for the type and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, that's one thing I would say is if you're being commissioned by a magazine, sort of be aware of, the, of how they might use the pictures graphically mm -hmm. and look. If you shoot sort of areas, I mean, it seems perverse, but quite often, I mean, there's a shot I did of Rosamund Pike. And I got her lying on the floor of this sort of uh, studio in amongst all these cables. Um, and everyone thought it was a bit mad, you know, but actually I knew that it would work really well across two pages and they could lay some type on this grey floor. And of course, you know, the magazine were really happy with that. So, so they ended up using it. Yeah. So, I mean, this one here is another great example, Fields of Gold, because you basically got the possibility of laying a bit of type here. Whereas mm -hmm. as a photograph, you might think, well, why has he left a gap there? But actually... It's more sophisticated. It's easy to sort of fill the frame like a photo me booth, but it think about composition, think about the sort of relative uh, um, elements of a photograph within the frame and how they can kind of work together to produce something that can be in the context of a magazine. So for instance, you don't want to have something 
necessarily in the middle if it because it won't get run across two pages because you're going to have a staple sort of in in some in someone's forehead so that's mm -hmm. not a good good thing awesome uh, we'll keep scrolling but through. yeah he's obviously doing really he's doing really really, really well yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> and he's got some wwe yeah <laughs> Some awesome work. What I would say, actually, Kenny, is um, you you sort of made the tear sheets the first thing that you see, and maybe well, you. Let me double check that. So we go through. Let's just check that. Yeah. 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 So maybe maybe you've got to the point in your career where you don't have to say, "Look, I've had my work published." I think you've moved beyond that now, and actually, the photographs sort of stand up on their own. You could have this as an internal page perhaps just as a sort of uh, an illustration that you've had work published and you've been commissioned but you know some of the shots that would stand you know might might stand quite well on their own you know with some white space around them awesome so you potentially yeah well, actually page. like the portraits page perhaps the, uh, I mean it is it, it is true that um, when you're being considered for a job your website you know it, people click on it and they don't spend a lot of time and so it's important to kind of hit hit them like a sledgehammer, you know, with something that's gonna they're gonna remember. Or with a portfolio, the first picture this is what I was always told, and the last picture are the most important images. So you have to make sure you have a humdinger to start, uh, and then you know maybe so followed by a couple of pretty good pictures, and then you can just relax a bit because you don't want to have a humdinger and then go to something that just kind of make is looks really lame after having had that great start and then finish on a good picture because quite often after you've had a conversation with the picture editor you're sort of just chatting about something else and you're just sitting there and the portfolio is still open and it's open on the last page so if it's mm -hmm. a really good picture that truly represents what you do that that's a good thing i like the picture that he's he's got a picture of himself and that's good yeah it's also good it's <laughs> clowning, a fun clowning around yeah. with a light meter it's a great picture mm. Cool. Yeah, well, thank you, Kenny, and thank you for the yeah. support on the channel as well. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. Always appreciate your comments. Definitely. Yeah. So, mm. uh, younger photographer, I, I think this is her, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but she seems to do fashion photography and... That looks like it's shot on sort of 5.4. The, the, the I can't zoom out this anymore. This is the rebate that I was trying to explain to you. When, when you see the edge, it's not that it's made from a contact sheet. It's mm -hmm. actually the rebate of the negative. Interesting. But... Uh, a nice, a really great, graphic. simple graphic. Yeah. Um, the only thing is you're having trouble navigating your way into the website. No, no, I, I know exactly how. And we've got some navigation bars here. Like the, I like the picture. The navigation's Angel. great. Great start. Um, great start. All right, so I'm, I'm guessing we click in to... I mean, it might, it might, be, a, it might be a woman uh, or it might be a man. Okay, no, we do have to go here. So we, we've got fashion photography to begin with. Mm -hmm. So quite uh, stark mm. imagery. Uh, we'll scroll through. You've done a bit of fashion photography. Yeah, I've done uh, various, uh, I've done sort of campaigns, advertising, when they wanted a sort of portrait kind of approach to fashion. But I have done, I have done a bit of fashion. I mean, it's not something that I've really pursued uh, because I sort of think it's kind of, um, I, you know, I like nice clothes and everything. <laughs> but, uh, and I think it's a good way of expressing yourself. Um, and I've got my... You know, one of my assistants, Annie Collinge, is and, and actually Linda Brownlee as well. I should give Linda a, a we'll, we'll, shout. We'll put both those. Uh, you know, they're they're really they're doing really well, and they're both fashion photographers. Um, but for me, I sort of uh, it, it's not for me about the clothes, uh, even though you want people to look great and stuff. Uh, uh, it's not. <laughs> I can hear Marco yeah, whining. He's, he's driving me nuts. <laughs> I don't think it will pick up on the microphone, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, I, I, when I, whenever I photograph people, portraits of famous people, and there's a stylist there, and they try and make it into a fashion shoot, I just end up kind of getting annoyed because quite often they have their own agenda, as we found oh, recently. Oh yeah, for sure. We did a shoot with uh, yeah. Philip Salon. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, they, they. That's fair enough. The magazine sort of the, it pays for the content, the advertising, so they they that informed their choices as to which pictures were used. Maybe we should do a video about the Philip Salon because they yeah. were great pictures. For uh, sure, I was really for happy sure. with them, and and it really it it worked well because I was working with a friend of mine who's a stylist uh, mm -hmm. who's a bit of a legend in the world of fashion, David Bradshaw, and he kind of 
was like a buffer and he, he appreciated the fact that you know we want we just wanted to make great portraits mm -hmm. so it wasn't too onerous cool but so we'll go through this i know uh, she has musicians here as well mm. which is uh, mm. more portrait based less about the clothes but Anything you want to mention? Yeah, I mean, I like, as you scroll down, I, I sort of find the stuff at the top, uh, the, the picture about, it says, whatever, uh, whatever you want, no one gives a fuck. Gives a fuck maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it, um, it, it's not for me, uh, because it's, I mean, maybe I'm not the constituency of people who would be in the market for that. Maybe that's what uh, fashion looks like now. So this isn't my area of expertise, but just what I prefer is stuff that's more, you know, has a has a sort of quieter, uh, more contemplative, contemplative uh, picture. So uh, straight away, fashion or this type of fashion or this kind of yeah. stuff isn't quite your forte, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I had, as I... Um, before the camera died was explaining I, I have done fashion I did campaigns for House of Fraser and uh, whole spreads for Italian magazine Amica I, I sort of got into the habit of doing fashion but I did it where I used um, real people as models uh, because I sort of felt that well, I didn't want it instead of like traditional model venues. yeah okay. sort of uh, but I mean I it by its very nature it's constantly changing so I can just sort of say that I for instance would sort of be more drawn to a picture like that because it's more of a portrait um, okay. uh, and uh, so so you know it's a kind of constantly evolving thing fashion so it's by its very nature it's ephemeral so it's constantly changing yeah and as soon as uh, one sort of particular style becomes uh, you know part of the uh, accepted idea of what fashion photography is then it sort of then changes into something else and that's what happened in the 90s was Jürgen Teller started using compact cameras because previously to that phot fashion photography was very technically uh, virtuous uh, it was it had an incredible level of uh, virtuosity so you had photographers like Nick Knight that had kind of extraordinary skill and then Jürgen Teller started using just compact cameras, right. you know, and as a rebuttal to that or as a kind of uh, response to that. So it's a constantly changing thing. So there isn't one right way or wrong way of doing it other than, you know, if you're doing lookbooks or if you're doing uh, sort of stuff uh, for a massive catalogue and, it, and it's very straight and, and uh, you know, you, you basically need to just show the clothes. Right. So I'd say um, Angel's work is a sort of, a combination there are some pictures that are quite straight and then there's stuff that's quite conceptual so this picture here for instance you it's know very she, futuristic yeah and, and I think um, she's probably or or he has probably uh, used separate light source uh, for uh, the model's face you know and it and it's uh, you know it's quite striking mm. cool and then we'll go on to uh, I think she or he has some more kind of portrait style here yeah so so they look like more you know like a snap you know, with the compact cameras, sort yeah. of very uh, flash on camera, sort of. And there's something very nice about something that looks like a, a snap because it sort of implies some intimacy. Mm -hmm. It What it loses in sort of technical virtuosity, it gains in intimacy. And so that's why it's sort of something that people play with. Uh, there's this various... almost looks like it's from a studio as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually. we were talking, that's what Terry Richardson sort of used, these sort of hard flash and sort of, it's sort of almost of uh, an intention to kind of disregard photographic technique and sort of make something. Similarly, if you, I mean, I, I think there was a fashion campaign that consisted of pictures that were taken from a CTV uh, sort of surveillance camera that That's were all cool. green because it sort of, there was no quality there, but it sort of implied uh, sort of that you were kind of voyeuristically watching. So, um, I mean, I'm kind of, um, rabbiting on there but I mean you know there's a lot of different ways of approaching it there's an element of portraits in these uh, in these fashion pictures as well which I like for sure and they look like she's de uh, or he's uh, kind of documented a, a, a scene uh, and you know the people have trusted her mm -hmm. cool I'm not sure if there's meant to be photos here no it hasn't been added mm. maybe it's just space for more yeah so is Angel at the beginning of their career? Um, I would, if, if Angel's 
her at the beginning, then she definitely looks young, but she's got a great portfolio already. Mm. Definitely. And I can't tell where they're based. Uh, maybe there's information on contact. But otherwise, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, I think the pictures hang together well. They there's a consistency of approach. There's a kind of uh, I mean, the picture that we're first greeted with, the Stark picture, uh, appears to be sort of on five four. I don't know whether it is or whether that's a sort of uh, an aesthetic choice to because it looks great because it sort of references um, Richard Avedon's pictures in the American West, which was shot on five four, and he sort of went around America and photographed these. Uh, stark portraits of, well, I guess, the sort of Rust Belt, the kind of authentic American. Uh, you know, there's a very famous mm -hmm. picture of a guy all covered in bees and yeah, so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll put it up on. The and screen. maybe maybe this is referencing that, and it's not actually shot on ten ten by eight, which is the way that Richard Avedon but did still, it. Still, to find comparison with Richard Avedon is yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, a good thing. it. I well, I think I think it's just. Um, it's a nice way, uh, a graphic way of, of, of approaching your photography. It's a good, it works well. Uh, I mean, it's precisely what I did when I worked for the NME. I shot everything on medium format, preferably against a white background. I was really a, very obsessed and influenced by Richard Avedon. Uh, and I'm sure David Bailey was as well, because really what he did was kind of re referencing that and recreating that. It's very derivative of Richard Avedon, the, the best stuff Bailey did in the 60s. And um, it works very well because it's very graphic. It's very, um, it, it, with the NME, the paper that, that they were printing was very poor quality. So something that's very stark like that, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need kind of very high levels of uh, printing quality to, to produce a result that works well on the page. Mm -hmm. But the, the pictures sort of hang together well. Um, you know what you're going to get. You know, you'd commission Angel to go and, for, for Vice or something like that, to go and do sure. uh, a series of pictures about, you know, maybe uh, over in Afghanistan where they've kind of got a, uh, you know, a marijuana farm or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. You know, basically, you'd imagine and it would be kind of uh, under going undercover. There's a sort of uh, there's an edge to it, which is which is sort of very kind of current. I'd yeah, say. Yeah, for sure. People curate after that, I guess. Mm. Cool. Uh, well, thank you, Angel. I think uh, the website looks great as well. Yeah, I'm loving the invert uh, mouse overs. Mm. It looks great. So uh, we'll walk. We'll walk um, We'll go on to our last one then. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's Thorsten here. So yeah, our final portfolio we're going to review for today um, is Thorsten's. I've just yeah. um, I've opened up your website on I've opened up your website on Opera, the Opera browser, and uh, it doesn't load correctly. Just to let you know, but I have it up here on Chrome. And um, so that's an important point. You know, um, really, you don't need a portfolio these days. Your website is your portfolio. You could even make do with just Instagram. Um, maybe Instagram would create a better impression because if if you're just unlucky and the art director who's thinking about commissioning you has that particular browser, maybe they won't have the sort of intelligence to sort of just try another browser. You know, they might just give up on you. You know, I mean, yeah, make assumptions. Even the CV or job application worlds, which are more corporate. The CV is not easy to use, they just throw it away straight away. Yeah. We'll go straight into portrait, that's what you know. There's a grass okay. option, theatre, analogue. We'll take a look at portrait. I like the way it goes out of focus in uh, when you, on the mouse animation. over. Yeah, it's lovely. So a well-made website right now. I think they're German. Yeah. Um, Do you think uh, Thorsten did the website himself? Uh, potentially. Even most. I can imagine most artists have a lot of uh, creative input in their yeah. website. Okay, so cool. I thought they had Cartier Bresson. If he'd met, he'd met him. But uh, so they've got an English and a German section. That's always good. Yeah, I like the. Uh, is I assume that's a picture of, uh, of Thor Thorsten. Thorsten. Yeah, it's cool. Very nice. All right, so we'll scroll through to begin with, and if there's anything that catches your eye, mm. like always. Mm. I can zoom in a little bit if you like. There you go. 
He photographed Steve Jobs, I see. Wow. Maybe he was in a, a conference or, or something like that. Yeah, Jürgen Teller, who I was uh, talking about earlier. So this is a, sort of serendipitous. This is the photographer I was telling you about. He yeah. uses snapshots and very uh, interesting fashion photography. I've got a Jürgen Teller print, actually. Um, oh, wow. uh, and he uh, kind of subverts fashion. So he kind of like, there's an undercurrent of, uh, of uh, humour there, dark mm -hmm. humour, which is very appealing. I quite like that picture of Jürgen, and also uh, I see you photographed Patty Smith as well. So some, some really lovely some, names here. Some cool, yeah. cool people, and and also let's just look at that Patty Smith. I assume that's Patty. Smith. Yes, it is. Um, uh, I mean, it must be. Uh, you must have had a kind of long and varied career to sort of get these people. Shana um, Reeves. Yeah. Chet Baker. Yeah. Some awesome stuff. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, really and interesting. Again, Salman Rushdie. He's got his, um, why well, he's got Salman Rushdie. Yeah, Alex Soth, Joel Mayovitz. There's some fantastic Thomas that's, Struth. That's a lovely photo. Yeah. So I don't think you really need a portfolio review. <laughs> what I would say is that um, it's kind of um, quite eclectic, uh, but there's a consistency in oh, terms 100%. of your approach. Uh, he's got a style, hasn't he? Absolutely. Uh, Rem Coolhouse. Uh, I think he's an architect. The, um, I mean, it's a great example, like me, really, that um, one thing that doing this has sort of given me the opportunity to, to do is to meet amazing people and then record that relationship. And uh, you've certainly had that uh, opportunity as well. So great to see. And, and I think you haven't frozen when you've been sort of faced with Salman Rushdie or whatever. Uh, you've managed to sort of... Uh, where, is, where is Salman Rushdie? Salman Rushdie's there. Oh, wow. I assume a lot of these pictures might have been taken uh, with uh, when you're working for a newspaper or something like that, and you haven't got much time, you have to get something quite quickly, perhaps when people are being interviewed. And that's how, that's how I got a lot of my pictures. And, and really, it's a question of taking that opportunity and then kind of, kind of finessing something more out of the situation by force of personality or, 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 or you know, a kind of a belligerence. Um, but yeah, really lovely photos here. He's got hmm. signature styles. Yeah, they all look like they're, they're 35 mil. I'd say he probably looks about my age, so he's already had a long career. Good work. All right, so we'll, we'll move on to, um, we can have a quick look into grass. I'm curious by that. Um, it's about Gunter Grass. Uh, so um, he uh, wrote Tim Tin Drum, which was made into a film, uh, right. which is... So there's a whole uh, project around him, I guess, or maybe... Yeah, it's... yeah, I guess so, yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. And we'll go to... So this has given you an opportunity to sort of uh, meet amazing people and indulge your enthusiasm for popular culture, specifically the visual realm, and uh, I salute that. So his, uh, in 1987, he's visited New York for the first time, mm. and his... This is like one of those... Actually, maybe that's two frames, because that's the edge of a frame there. But it looks 35 mil. But nice, I like that. Yeah, nice uh, documentary. Fantastic. This is, this is like the uh, Cartier... Yeah. There's a very famous Cartier-Bresson shot. Very effective. Nice series. Yeah, I'm loving these pictures. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, this guy's great. Yeah. We like it. <laughs> yeah, it's really great stuff. Let's, uh, let's have a look about. Is this Thorsten? Or... No. Uh, let me translate it. Can you translate it? Well, it, it might be a... Finding a good photographer. So this is... Um, do you... So he's asked the actress... Uh, oh, so this is the, act this is the actress's experience. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's, oh, a nice, that's a nice idea. Uh, I think that's a really good idea. So Gunter's that... got a uh, quote for him as well. Come on, boy, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me 
Is this him here then? Yeah. Oh no, is this Tim? It's another Tim. actor yeah. talking about this. I like this. This is great because it's always the case that you should never forget that you're photographing a person and, you know, it's very easy to kind of um, stamp people with technique. I'm sure I've said that expression loads. Uh, and you forget that you're dealing with a real person. So it's nice to see them, the people that he's photographed, actually uh, advocating for, for his work. Mm -hmm. So this is some of the portraits we saw in this portrait section. Mm. He's asked each of them to provide a little something. Yeah, it's great. It's great from an about page. Definitely, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So a quick look in the news tab. Translate it again. Yeah. I mean, one thing that uh, I've noticed that if you're going to have a news tab, uh, then you should at least always ensure that you have something relatively recent that mm. you've posted. Otherwise, it looks like, as is often the case, something uh, an, an area of your website that you've neglected, a, a sort of like kind of little area of water that's gone stagnant. And that, you know, if, the, if you've got news from like 2016, it's not a good look, you know. Uh, but I'm not. Like I'm not saying this isn't. This is the case for yeah. Thorsten. So. That, well, he's probably smart. If it is, late. he hasn't put a date on it, so <laughs> yeah. that's good. Cool. You photographed salmon. I you? have photographed salmon, Rushdie. Maybe yeah. we'll we'll do something on my shoot with him. Yeah. I mean, it was at the height of his uh, sort of notoriety in terms of the fatwa, uh -huh. and so it was kind of tremendously exciting. And I must admit, I'm a huge fan of of his, and he was a lovely man. Awesome. I, I whenever I see someone, I just think of the uh, Kerber enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Larry, Larry David. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Amazing stuff. Really good. Thank really interesting uh, website, actually. Um, you know what I like about this website is it's he's sort of taken the ball and run with it. You know, you've you've actually um, kind of confounded the stereotypes and actually tried to do something a little bit more interesting and and actually given us more of an insight. Uh, it's more personal. Uh, perhaps you, perhaps you, that's probably maybe one of the reasons we couldn't access it because it's not done in a corporate way that is just going to work on a phone or a tablet or anything. You've just produced something that's very personal and, and it's more memorable as a result, perhaps. 100%, yeah. And I think the only uh, advice was uh, that it doesn't work on opera, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah. minor. Yeah, but nice work, nice work. Yeah, amazing work. And everyone featured in this uh, in this video will have their Instagrams uh, in the description and uh, any Absolutely. handles they send me, and we'll have them on page on on the screen as well. So. Definitely. Cool. Well done, everyone. Yeah, thanks a lot for sending them in, and uh, we had quite a few, so we'll do some more videos like this in the future. Yeah. But um, yeah, appreciate it. We can let Marco bat it back in now. Yeah, we could bring Marco in now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll switch the phone. We've, <laughs> we've let this little guy, this little guy's uh, now allowed to come in. All right, cool. <laughs> All right thanks for watching.